So a year ago, I decided to become a professional photographer and it's been such an incredible journey. Really doesn't get, doesn't get, doesn't get, doesn't get, doesn't get any better than this. Time goes by, I've my mind about you and I. Have you seen the light? You and I. It's blue sky in that so direction and fog in that direction. Morning everybody, it's great to see you all again. So my story began in Yosemite National Park when my heart literally stopped. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about my story and then I'm gonna get on to five things that I think have made a really big difference to me becoming a professional photographer. So, around about 17 years ago, I set up a software company and I had an exciting time. It grew fairly quickly and we eventually launched in the US and I went over there about two and a half, three years ago now to set up an office in San Francisco. It all seemed like a dream, it was amazing, we had a great time and I'd worked really hard to do this. But I'd always wanted to do landscape photography. It was a dream that I had when I was young. I'd set up my, doing photos in my dark room when I was sort of 13, 14 years old. And to be a landscape photographer was really a dream for me and I'd never really managed to do it. I, I suppose I didn't really have the the, the commitment to go out there and just make a decision, I'm going to stop doing this software thing that I'm doing and, and go and do landscape photography. It was really difficult to, to decide to do that. But then when I was in California, I was in Yosemite and I, I've spoke about this before and I had a fairly big accident. I was in Yosemite Valley and I was driving and the next thing I knew I was on the roof of my car and I couldn't understand why. To cut a long story short, I had had a helicopter journey out of Yosemite. They thought I broke my neck. Um, I hadn't, I was okay. But I'd found out when I was in hospital that my heart had stopped again three times for 30 seconds at a time. So it was a bit of a shock to me when I found out that I had to have a pacemaker fitted. And it really change my whole outlook on everything really. I was fine, I got a pacemaker and, and health-wise that, that was okay, but it really made me think that we only have a small amount of time on this planet and we've got to make the most of it. So after having have moved my family all the way over to California, we decided to come back to the, to the UK and I made the really big decision to make a change in, in my life. And that was to become a professional landscape photographer. It's only for the better. They say we're gonna be alright. So important to love what it's you do. Now a lot of people say that you spend a lot of time at the office and if you don't love what you do, that that's not great. But I think it's it's more important than that. I think you We'll get so many more benefits from doing something that you love. You'll be happier. You will be more successful. And I'll come on to success because I think success is different and the way people measure success is very different. But you will be more successful. You'll be happier. You'll be more relaxed. You'll be more engaging. So whether you're doing something you love at work with your colleagues, you'll be more engaging. For me on YouTube, I love it. I think it comes across in a more engaging way. And it then everything, everything just becomes easier. And as much as anything else, it'll just make you much more healthy as well. So the next thing is how important quality is in what you do. I think it's really important to find your style, but more important than that is, is making sure that you have really good quality within your skill set. So I started off with my iPhone. My first ever video was shot with my iPhone. I had no microphones, just my iPhone. And then I moved to a Yi, um, a cheap GoPro and did a lot, probably of my first sort of 20 videos with that. And then I went on to using my SLR and my Fuji X-T2. But how I started to develop my style was a, a slow process. Now the drone and, and shooting the drone and talking to the drone is a great example of how I've added that into my style. And, and it's really been a, a, a very sort of slow process. It's not something that I've rushed into. I, I've evolved and, and I think 
I think the problem is that on Instagram and YouTube now, there's so many people doing it that it's sometimes difficult to find your style. But if you take it slowly, if you just add things in a little bit at a time, then I think you do two things. You create a style, but you also make sure that everything is of really high quality. And that is so important, isn't it, Pebbles? Hey, it's really important. And if you love what you do, then it makes it so much easier to work harder. And hard work is the most important ingredient in, in being successful at what you do and, and, and actually enjoying what you do, even if you love it. Those two things go hand in hand. So if you love what you do and you're working harder at it, then it, it, it becomes much more easy to see the outcome of it. You know, I'm sure it's really familiar that you, you're thinking, oh, I've got to work really hard, but there's no real benefit to you. you, you you're just in the churn of day-to-day of -day work. But what I find is that, that actually harder work is really beneficial to me. One of the things that, that I have is a really chronic back problem. It's not something I've spoken about a lot on my channel, but I really, really struggle. Sitting down um, is so hard for me to do. Sitting an office desk is, is, is almost impossible. If you, if you saw how I had to edit these videos every single week, I, I've got a contraption that I lie down on my bed um, and um, I have my keyboard at a certain angle. And it, it's really, really difficult to do. And that was something that become very difficult in, in my previous role, really, that you know, I had to sit down and, and work at a computer. I was in pain. You know, I just didn't love it as much as I love this. And, and, and that became then very difficult to work hard at. And then it, it's just so much more difficult to do. Working hard is something that you have to do. So being able to love what you do becomes embroiled in it. So actually for me, the hard work and the, the sense of accomplishment from that hard work helps me deal with my bad back and the pain, the chronic pain that I get from my bad back. You know, it's a real mental stimulus for me. And I find that when I'm out doing videos like I'm doing now, even though that I'm in pain, you know, concentrating on what I'm doing and enjoying what I'm doing makes such a big difference to me. Waiting for the light come onto the land over there and find the wind blowing me a lot. But the thing that I really want to stress is just how much work doing this entails. Every video that I, I put out every week you know, requires a huge amount of work. It, it's probably 10 hours of editing and um, a lot of videos don't actually see the, the light of day. I probably, for every video that I produce every week, I probably produce three times the amount of content that it takes to produce that video. So a lot of them are scrapped and I don't actually show you guys because I care so much about the quality. Um, but because I love it so much, because I'm so passionate about it and I want to do it so much, and it's not about the money at all, it's about producing something that I care so deeply and passionately about, then working hard is so easy but obviously you've got to be really careful with your time so time is your most valuable asset and you've got to be really careful with time you've got to treat it really carefully now when i started my channel um, what i wanted to do is is obviously make some revenue that was really important you've got to be able to tick over and 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 be able to grow things and as i was growing my audience then i did things like workshops and some commercial work and I'm continuing to do those workshops because I love doing them. They offer massive benefit to my audience. But it, basically, it's a one-to-one -one ratio with my time and what I get back from that. What I eventually want to be able to do is leverage that time a little bit more. So what I do is split my time up into compartments, really. I have things like workshops and planning those workshops. I have commercial work. I have time that I spend on marketing which i think is really important now marketing is, is things like growing my audience doing these youtube videos that i love so much and i think have massive benefit to my audience then i work on projects like digital download projects like the ebook that i've recently produced now although um I, I gave that for free i did a pay what you like and i had a massive response to that and that 
ended up generating me a reasonable amount of revenue because I put a huge amount of effort into it and time into it because I knew that that was leveraging my time to a greater audience. The other thing that I spend my time on is improving my skills as well. So I put a lot aside, I, I tend to do this on a, on a Monday. Um, and, and I put away that time for leveraging my skill, improving my skills, maybe trying different things on my cameras of how I could improve my video skills or my photography skills. And by doing all these things, ultimately what I'm trying to do is make the most use of my time. And effectively with this pyramid here, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to I get to the point where my time is being leveraged as much as possible. So there'll be a time where I'm probably doing less workshops and, and those workshops will be, will be grander. Maybe, you know, ideally I'd love to do a workshop to Antarctica or something. So less of those and more of doing things that I think will have more benefit to my audience. And it's really important to make sure that you're always concentrated on the audience that you spend so much time to grow. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been really, really fun to make. It's been great to look back at the year that I've had, which has been really quite magical. I wanted to leave you with a few things that I think you should avoid doing. I think, I think there's a certain number of things that I, I've learned since doing this, and, and I think I've made done wrong. Um, so they, they are that you know, I started off caring a bit too much, I think, about what other people were doing rather than just thinking what I was doing. And I think that's important. You got, you, you, as I said earlier in the video, you've got to create your style. I think that's, I think that's really important. Don't think you're going to make lots of money out of selling prints. Um, I get lots of emails to me to say, how do you sell your prints? Um, and, and, and really, that's a very small proportion of, of the income that I make. And also, similarly, don't think you're going to make lots of money from selling ad revenue. It's interesting, I was watching a video that Thomas Heaton did his Q&A question, and, and he said that he made money from lots of different um, sources. And, and, and that's, a, that's true for many people that go onto YouTube. And it's good to have you know, lo lots of different things that are pro providing passive income for you, if, if, if possible. That makes a really big difference. And, and then the final thing, and I think probably the most important thing, is caring so much about quality. I think quality is so important. I think often people forget just how important it is. Caring about the, the quality of your photos, the quality of your videos. And I think if you do those things right, then, then you know, certainly I, I, I think that's made a really big difference to me and made what I, 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 I deem success. And I think success is a metric that everybody looks at differently. So I've had a fantastic time over the last year. Thanks to you so much. It's been, you know, just amazing. I, I, I'm just humbled by how much, how many comments I've got. And yeah, it's just, it's just brilliant. I can't wait for the next year. I think there's just so many things that are, excite me. I've got loads of locations planned and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye.